favorite things about coming to SEMA is the attitude that it's, I'm here to learn and I always want to come by different booths and see the products that they have, why they created them, how to use them, and how we can use them back in the V8 Speed and Resto shop. So I came to the FBS booth to meet with Steve Demand to learn how to use all of their products, especially their pinstripe tape. So Steve, tell me, why do you use this product? I use the product because it's, it's making my job a little bit more easy as far as using different types of tapes for different applications. Okay, so tell me um, the car behind us, you painted, right. and um, what, did you, what products did you use? Well, I'm using all the FBS line of tapes, uh, pretty much all the fine line tapes, uh, okay. tape, some crepe tapes and some of the vinyl tapes and some of the new rice paper tapes that are really, really thin. Okay. Um, so the edges are real soft on it, so you're not putting so much of a build on it as far as uh, mill thicknesses. And when you put putting clear on top of it, it's making it a lot smoother. So the end result is less polishing time. Okay. And why did you pick, um, you mentioned like the rice paper tape. Is, is Tell me what some of the differences are between the products on the table. Well, some of this rice paper tape, it, it's, it's, uh, if you put different color tapes down, you can actually put this on top of it and you can see through it. So when you got a oh. razor blade on it, right. you can actually follow that line. Okay. And so you're not like trying to, you know, trying to look just for the edge of it. You can see through it. Cool. Okay. And um, what about the different colors, the yellow, the orange, and the, and the a little bit different color orange? Well, what's cool about it, um, the different colors, like, like the green fine line tape actually. Oh, I didn't um, even see green, cool. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it's, this one turns a little bit more easier than the orange one. The orange one gets you a little bit more straighter lines. Okay. So you can pull like a longer section, like, like the whole lines length on, of the Impala. Exactly, 20 feet. You <laughs> okay. know, it's not gonna stretch or it's not gonna buckle on you. Okay. Um, and the colors actually come in handy because if you're using different colors, you can actually see what kind of patterns you're doing. And if you're paneling out stuff, you can, you know, Obviously, if you chase that one line, you're going to find that green line throughout your project. Right, okay. So. And um, on your car, you painted so many different colors and what appears to be so many different layers. Uh, on this type of product and the tape, were you able to leave the tape on for a long period of time or, or did you not need to do that? I don't really know the steps you took. Well, obviously the car, when I did the graphics, it was all done at one time. You know, I just okay. kept on it and it got it done. So it didn't spend too much time on it. Right. But by the time I lay it out, it's got probably, I'll lay out the car and probably the next day, so you know, it's sitting for like a 20 hours or so. Right. And when I come back to it, nothing's shipped on it. Okay. So, the tape doesn't track on base coats. Okay. Um, the glue on it's phenomenal. It's not leaving no residues behind, so there's less cleanup on it. Okay, that's great. And can you give me some advice, um, especially like the long straight lines, how, what tricks do you use? Where do you begin in the car? Do you start at the back? Do you start at the front? Well, it all depends. I, I'll, I'll kind of like vision something in my head and kind of, I'll pull my first line, which is going to be the main line. Okay. So off that main line that I got going, I build off of that. Okay. You're using like anywhere from 16th all the way up to like three quarter, two inch tape, uh -huh. you know, and I'm using all the tapes for measurement. So you won't right. see, you won't catch me with a ruler or, you know, a measuring tape. Okay. It's just a center line and built off of that. Okay. And um, what do you prep the panels with? before you start laying down the tape? Well, after I get like the base coat down, usually I clear coat the whole car. And then okay. I go and sand it with 800. Okay. And then as soon as that's done, I'll wipe it down with alcohol and get it all really clean so there's no fingerprints. As soon as you're, you know, as soon as you start working your hands on it, you're starting to leave a little residue behind it, especially when you're going into curves. Right. So, you know, if your curves are lifting, obviously there's contamination on it. So basically you need to back up your tape get back in there and clean that corner up and you want to just try to turn it one time if you keep taking it off even though you can do it like that yeah it's just the chances of you getting more residue in that corner is, you know it's going to be it'll be there now you mentioned clearing it the, uh, over the base coat do you use an inner coat clear or do you use like regular you clear? can you can use an, you can use an inner coat clear okay. um i like to trap my all my layers in urethane. Okay. So I'm not going back. If I do have a mistake, I can wipe it off with thinners or reducer or sand it. Okay. So I got a lot of safety in between this, so I'm not having to go back and go, oh man, I gotta rebase this thing again. You right. Know? So it's right. saving it's taking a little bit more time, but in the end result, your paint's gonna look a lot deeper. Okay. And you mentioned that the tapes are thin, so how many after you lay out all these stripes, which there are a lot on your car, <laughs> how many um, layers of clear do you put on to where you don't feel your lines anymore, your stripe tape anymore? Well, when I'm done doing my graphics, you can barely feel it. 
Okay. You know, so you can put two coats of clear on it and it's already buried. Wow, okay. There's a lot of, you know, it's all in the gun technique, you know, right. using the water guns. I've been using it for like 20 years. Okay. You know, um, once you learn how to how to choke your guns and, and, you know, use your guns properly and use your material properly, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have that, you know, too much money in your paint job. The money should be in your design work and that's, that's where it's all at. You don't need to pound it on because once you do, then, you know, you're putting more clear right. and, you know, you're just doing way more work. Right, right. And we use the ProMask kit. How do you like that and what do you use it for? Oh, these are handy. They're just, you know, what's nice about them is they're plastic. They're kind of octagon, so, you know, you lay it on a table or if you're doing it on a roof, it's not going to roll off. Right. So, they're cool. I mean, the smaller ones are even a little bit cooler because you can put it in your back pocket while you're working. Oh, wow. You know? Okay. So, you can pull it back out and rip it. Right. And, uh, you know, if you need it bigger, it unfolds. Uh -huh. So, you double up the size on it. So, right. you know. So they're, they're actually handy and then you don't need a, if you're doing like some garage work or whatever and you just have them on your shelf, mm -hmm. you don't need a paper mask machine. Right. So right. that takes up so much room. Right. And this you can just pull off the shelf and once you're done with it, you, pull, you know, pop in a, you know, a new one and yeah. just easy. That's what we're all about. Um, so we'll go back to the techniques that you use. Um, we can tell you've used some silver leaf, I think some gold flake, there's some sparkles in there yeah. and it looks like even some machine like turning. engine turning things going on. How do you do that with, with your stripes? Um, it's a lot of technique and you know, just being studying like all the hot rod world where I came from, where I started, the history about me that a lot of people don't know is like, you know, I studied underneath Steve Stanford and Chip Foos and all these guys that are big time builders, right. you know, Santini and, and all these guys that I looked up to. So I've, I've got to learn and they beat it into me to, to learn style right. and paneling and old school ways of doing things. And that's okay. what this is all about, you know. Okay. Um, the leafing and stuff's all done, you know, by hand. The striping's all done by hand with brushes and the engine turns all done with the velvet, you know. And the silver leaf, it has silver leaf and gold leaf on it and it's added candy over it to, just to kill the color to come up with the greens and the okay. yellows and stuff like okay. that. Um, when someone is interested in learning what you do, the striping and the textures and the changing of the, the tones and the color changes and things like that, where do you advise them to start? I mean, you got some great teachers, and uh, where, yeah. where do you advise people to start? Call me. Okay, you'll listen. Go you'll on talk to my to website. You can contact me at colorkings.com. Okay. Um, I'm about you know teaching everybody because. It was hard for me to learn it. I, I probably wait. I won't say I wasted ten years of my life doing it, but yeah. um, I could probably save five, six, seven years of somebody's heartache on, on learning how to do this stuff and using it properly and using you know less materials. You're not going out killing yourself in, in your pocketbook. Right. You know, and that's the key. The key is doing it. You know, as cheap as you can get it, but getting this type of look and making it a, a masterpiece. Right. Is there any technique to removing the tape? So that you know, I don't know. Well, obviously, <laughs> anything can happen. Yeah, obviously, if you got a prep right, you shouldn't have an issue. But I like to pull back on the tape instead of pulling up on the tape. Obviously, if you're pulling up on the tape, like you know, you're just pulling it up like this. Yes. You know, you're, you're actually lifting it up off your project. Right. But if you fold it backwards like this and you're pulling it, it's actually not pulling on it. So your your lines will come out sharper on your edge. You know, so then you barely got to knock it down. And that, that's pretty pretty much one of the keys. I mean, I've had that problem before when I, in my younger days. So it's, that's a good, you know, it's a good tip. Well, Steve, I really appreciate all the advice. Um, we are all about learning, and you've taught us a whole bunch. And we really admire the paint job. It's uh, so many beautiful colors and so many different textures and changes. It, it's amazing work, and we really appreciate everything you taught us today. Oh, thank you very Keep much. Keep up the for good work. Thank you.